Well guys, welcome back. It's the match you've all been waiting for. It's the GEST Grand Finals for your GEST IDC January. Even though we're in February, we do things differently here. And of course, all of this possible thanks to Gigabyte. And we are here in the Grand Finals, not only thanks to Gigabyte with this tournament, but one of the teams, iZone Gigabyte, are here. Very familiar team as far as Grand Finals of the GEST go. They've won it twice. They've been in, I think, five separate finals for different cups. Here we are in the final cup of the Season 1. We've reached our 12th cup. Uh, we started last February, and here we are in fake January. This was meant to be in January. got delayed a bit, but pushed into February. But this is the January edition with our final cup and a team who have come close on a couple different occasions but have yet to get themselves a GEST cup is over on the skirt size. That is Pacific Palette. And we're going to see whether or not they can do what they've so far failed to do. Would love to see them get their cup here with the last last one of the season. We'll see if they can do it. It is going to be Pacific Blitz Ace playing the Drow Ranger at the bottom lane. We've got EMZ playing the Shadow Demon. We've got Inso playing the Rubik at the mid lane. We've got 420KU playing the Skywrath Mage. And at the top lane, we've got none other than ALTC or Santino playing the Nerubian Assassin. And over on the Sentinel side, weighing in at 5 Nerd 4, we have got Mr. Paul on the Queen of Pain. We've got DK being played by Nando. And at bottom lane, we've got the Earthshaker of Atong. Kel playing the Ancient Apparition. And then finally, on the Farming Life Stealer is Joven. We'll see how this trial in versus trial in progresses. We saw a glimpse of it last game. We only got a minute or so of it before we had to pull in a remake, but this game, hopefully, hopefully going to be be won without too many issues. There we go. As uh, both teams sort of competing over the pool a bit. This trial is going to be where the important stuff happens. This is this is the lane both teams want to win. Life's still going to have a very tough time. It has to get the stout shield. The range to rest from three separate heroes. Ooh! Can you get the block? Can you get the block? First one actually happens elsewhere. It's mid lane. Mid lane happens. Drow Ranger gets away and elsewhere. Oh, Skywrath mates with a very early first blood. The true shot aura helps him out. Gives him some extra bonus damage and DK goes down. EMZ gets a kill at bottom lane. 2-0 for Pacific Palette right off the bat. They make it a third here. Lifestealer. Very, very low. Missing everything. But excitement right off the bat. And Lifestealer. Oh, he needs to be careful. Chilling touch. Ancient Apparition going for an early point in Chilling Touch. Give you some plus damage here. That's something which that will help a bit in the trial inverse trial and scenario. But Lifestealer, he needs a lot of help here. He's going to go down. He's trying to Lifesteal his way out of this one. Using the open wounds. Not going to happen, Suri. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Terrible start for Izone. Gigabyte and Pacific Pallet, they're going to be so thrilled about this one. DK especially giving up a, giving up the first spot at mid. It's a lot of gold going the way of the Skywrath Mage. He's actually losing... Uh, Skywrath is actually losing on CS, but give away first blood and that's plenty of gold to make up for the CS difference. Three CS, well, I'll take first blood any day of the week. DK's got his bottle, though. That's that's the thing he's, you can sort of count on here. Make sure he has that bottle. This is this is what gets hard, though. Is this going to be another kill? One more right click to follow it up. Skywrath has gotten two. What oh, some incredible hero control. They're knowing his hero's limits and... Oh, Nando, Nando, what is going on at the mid lane? He's been so rock solid, he gets picked off for a second time in a row. Two solo kills. Nando is just out of sorts. This matchup against the Skyrath Mage is very brutal, but... Oh, man. Not going well. Top lane. What's happening there? Queen of Pain, Paul, 8 and 5. Up against the Nerubian Assassin, 10 and 5. Wow, Queen of Pain actually getting outlast hit by the NA. Things are just not really looking good. Apart from the bottom lane where they have managed to get a kill. It looks like a block off. Help get set things up. They're maybe going to go for a second here. Rubik caught on the other side. He will get around and he goes down. Double kill for Kel. They strike back Eye Zone, but they're still definitely behind. Their start has been far, far worse, even with those two kills. Nothing really to make up for it. Skyrat. Level five and a half. DK, level four and a half. Huge level difference between the two. And this is going to be phenomenally bad for him once, once Skyrath hits level 6. Yes, level 2. 
Main points are another point in vision before they look to engage again. AA level 4. The point in chilling touch is giving them this extra damage. So when they do clash, they have a bunch of bonus damage for every right click they do. This new chilling touch, it does have some some uses in these trial and scenarios. And we'll have to see it here. Hope we get a glimpse. Well, I imagine that's what happened earlier on. Oh! Top lane, Queen of Pain. Gotta be careful there. Mid lane. Nando DK. Two levels behind. Maybe it's a level and a half, but right now he's level four against a level six Skyrath. And that is painful. Skyrath just needs to hit a slow, followed up by a well placed ultimate. He can get another kill there. Top. Queen of Pain and NA. They're trading blows for the most part. Queen of Pain completely out of mana. You can't really harass as well as you'd like him. This is potentially a kill. It's oh. The miss. That red text there popping up. He blinked. Mid animation. Got managed to just get out of here. Uh oh. Shadow Demon, can he get out of here? Not gonna see a fissure come out. Yes, this side is not the opening they want. It may be now though. They found the Joe Ranger. That's the opening they want. Yes. Not gonna even need the fissure really until a bit later. And so the cold feet did prop. And now now next, just happy to do a bit more harass. Bit by bit, he's just chipping away at these heroes. Now they've got the edge. Now that they've got these levels, level one, they weren't ready to fight. The tri-range harass was too much for them to handle, but now they've got level three, level four. They can sustain themselves in lane. Speaking of sustain himself, DK really struggling. He was down to about 50 HP. It was an ultimate. Yep, Skyrath used an ultimate. I was about to say, it really looked like he had. Didn't get the kill, though. Didn't get the kill. Bottom lane, ESAA. A player's forces are under attack. A decent time now. They've managed to, to redeem themselves to that poor side. They're actually about a level ahead of the supports. Or well, half a level even. That makes a big difference here. They're level 4 well. The Pacific supports are just about to hit that level 4 mark. And they're going to go in again. They're happy just to make it go. Ah, oh, no. They decide against it. Life Sealer wasn't, wasn't on board. He's going to salve up first. And now they want to wait for this to push out a bit more. They won't want to make too much of a rush of it. DK's fine for the time being. Skyrath, oh, I say Skyrath, hoping for a bottom rune, and he gets just that. DK says, well, that's that's bad luck. Sends the bottle home. He's going to have to refill it there. He's got this magic wand. That's going to help him stay alive against the spam. And in comes Skyrath again. Yes, he's there this time. Problem is, it's a haste rune, so you're going to have to really time it well under the tower if you want to get this kill. Oh, there's a fissure to lead things off. DK stun. Oh, flame breath, it's enough. Really smart play. Artong knew it was coming. And Nando baited it perfectly. The captain, well, one of the captains, I should say. Kel, normally the captain here, but it's Arton doing the picks. He sort of acts as one of the mentors here, making the calls, I imagine. And Nando plays his, his part. He acts, acts the victim, but really, really, he, the, bat, the bait was laying. And Skyrath, he took the bait. Yes, and DK pick up the kill. Yes, heading back towards bottom now. He's hit level 5. AA just about hit level 5. So really strong levels on them. All level 5. They're going to have to fight their way out of this one, though. AA's going to get picked up. He's in front. He's way out of position. ES Fissure not in range. And Lifestealer, he's kind of going in here. He may actually get this kill with a Fissure here. It does hit perfectly on the right side and could possibly even two if they can get the Shadow Demon as well. ES some body blocking. They do get two. ES gets the second and... Lifestyle, he's got these early phase boots really helping him out. He's going to need maybe an open wound, though, because he's taking a lot of damage. Oh, oh, oh Ops to infest. Out of mana now, though. Doesn't have an open wound. There's, uh... He's got the phase boots. That's the mobility he needs. Oh, mid lane DK, as always. So, so low. Top. It's Queen of Pain. Possibly being baited out a bit here. There's backup. It's a Rubik. Has the Rubik been spotted, though? That's going to be the difference between the kill or not. We saw it at mid with the EF. Pacific trying to replicate the feat at top lane. One telekinesis could be something that the Queen of Pain just doesn't calculate for. You think you're fine in lane, you're just pushing your limits, and then suddenly a telekinesis comes out of fog, and you're like, holy crap, I'm dead. That's what happened with the Fissure at mid. Oh, Shadow Demon. Got to be careful there. And Rubik, I think he actually may have gone too close there. Could even get spotted. Go ahead and see. Rubik is still lingering around. Uh oh, this could be it. He throws an impale that lands there. Rubik gets in close enough for a telekinesis and a level 2 fade ball. That's the death of Paul. But Paul has been spot on with his positioning so far. 
DK, fast treads. Just wants to tank up. He knows he needs whatever HP and survivability he can get. That's going to be how you, how you stay alive against this Skyra. And here's the two supports. Actually smoked up. They want this DK. Not going to find him in the lane at the time being. He's off in the nukes. Knowing, sensing something's maybe a right, or at least just waiting for his bottle. He's he knows he's too low to even lane just against the Skyrath on his own. So, oh, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, he went for the knife. They're gonna go in immediately. Death of DK. Not a chance to survive this. Ea solution only is there. EMZ picks up the kill with the Shadow Demon. And it's top lane. Oh. Paul needs to be careful. Waxy pops it, gets a Shadow Strike off. Is there going to be a pass? Oh! One more right click. Magic Wand! The Magic Wand! Oh! He could have lived. He could have got the kill and lived. Paul, he didn't didn't calculate for the Magic Wand. He could have just kept on walking away. He wanted to get the kill, and then suddenly it's like, oh crap, I stay, overstayed my welcome. Oh! Santino manages to use some mind games to get the kill, but really, Queen of Pain, a bit of a misstep there. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Skyrath has joined, got, found some easier targets. The DK was a bit too tanky. He says, okay, here's some squishy supports. Let's have a go at them. ES is next. Taking out the AA. There's the ultimate. Big, big damage coming out. Double kill going the way of 420kU. That's next. Phase boots, brace up. Possibly going to be looking at that phase boots into drum build, which we've seen quite a bit of lately. All about the mobility. Oh, quit of pain. Easy kill. Cleans up Ace. Nothing to it. Use that ultimate at the right time. Couldn't do much with it at top. Wasn't going to be finding any kills there. He says, okay, I'll come top, grab a kill, and then you can go back top. Continue to farm. Just the one kill. Can really slow down Dro, Dro Ranger's momentum. What are we looking at for Santino? Surely it's got to be a Dagon. He's all about all about the burst damage, all about the killing power. And that's going to come from a Dagon. Oh, killing power at mid. They're going to find the, the Skyrath Mage, possibly even two. They want Rubik as well. He's actually stolen Fisher. Telekinesis as well. He's going to try it off multiple double stuns. Actually, he does hit the DK as well. He is still chasing. Needs to sort of aim downwards to get this. In comes some Shadow Poisons, DK, he may have overstayed his welcome, TP in from the Drow Ranger, this is not looking good, they both get silence, huge silence coming in from Ace, possibly both, both going to go down, ES ultimate not going to do enough damage, Queen of Pain with the blink screen will, counter Fissure coming out, Fissure's all over the place, and well, they push their limit in, Izone, they just managed to sort of trade decently there, they do lose the DK, but luckily for them, they do get another kill out of it, and Ruby and Assassin, he's hunting, He's got a DD, but DD's not going to help when you can't catch up. All in DD or not, it's a kill, but he's not getting in range. Oh, yes. Careful, son. Drums are up. There we go. There's Nexus drums. And this is going to help with his mana problems as well, though. I say that as a Nerubian assassin comes in and just mana burns in for no apparent reason. He's like, eh, you have too much mana. I'm going to pester you a bit. And that's... And that's going to help out his team overall as well as himself. Just give that mobility something you can't really have taken away from you. Sure, the slows are there, but it just it overcomes them. And that's going to get him in in close enough to do the damage he needs to do by time for the DK. DK who just is having a rough, rough time. Nothing going his way, and that's really the problem. Even when we have this this sort of more eco economical build coming out from the life stealer, his teammate aren't really taking. Well, not so much taking advantage, they're just not, they're being shut down. It's really great play from Pacific, shutting them down. Town is under siege. Bottom lane, they're trying to get this T1 tower on high zone. Oh, they're going to go straight on the life still here with a rage. Very silly play almost. Luckily, AA is just level 5. Ace going to go down here, but it's bottom lane where they, like, they lose AM. I say AM. By that I mean Joven. Pull at top. He needs to get more involved, I feel. That's four pink heroes going scurrying through the enemy jungle. Just trying to see what they can find. 
smokes all around. I'm gonna see the DK. Aren't they gonna commit to the DK though? He's gonna go to the next camp. Oh, he's gonna wish he had went home there. He's gonna he's gonna see what's happening now. Fissure. Oh, Fissure with an ultimate from the Skyrath Mage. Ridiculous amounts of damage, and this is getting him closer and closer to that bloodstone. If they get this T1 tower, well, that's his soul boost and most of the bloodstone, I want to say. Joe Ranger is here to help out with it. Level 13 crew shot aura, apparently. And some next level stuff. And wow, and more invis. First the smokes, now they get an invis rune. And this could be able to step another kill if they want. ES is just... Well, it's not that he's in a bad position, but he's in a bad position. <laughs> he's going to get seen. Fissures, but he's spotted. EMZ picks up the kill. Actually, Shadow Demon. Oh, I was about to say, how did Shadow Demon get that? I didn't see him. Shadow Poison, I guess, from afar. Ensures the kill, and Skyrath is just on a mean streak. Nothing really seems to be able to stop him. And speaking of being stopped, Santino at top lane is stopping this Queen of Pain from doing much. Picks up a kill. Need to get some bottle action happening here between tower hits. Does do so. That'll help keep him alive. And Pacific Pallet, they're looking really solid here. A player's forces are under attack. Bottom. Life still going to be forced back a bit. Drow Ranger hasn't had the best time farming. That's the one good thing that's come out of this for Izone. They've managed to stunt the Drow's farm. He had trades in a couple Wraith Bands. The thing is, just with having the level level 4 aura, a point or two in your ultimate, you can be very, very effective. I mean, even just giving extra damage to the Rubik and Shadow Demon, plus 29 on each. That's going to add up in these team fights. The Ranger does not have to have four or five big slots of full of items. Ideally, you want a BKB, a Manta style, but beyond that, as long as you, you've got a team around you, build around you to control the fights, you're looking good. And I mean, Rubik and Shadow Demon are good for that. Especially the Rubik, depending on what you can steal when you're stealing Fissure. Problem is, Skyrath, he's a single target nuke, and this is one thing he's prone to, being ganked. He's going to get ultimate by the ES. Luckily, he does have the backup there. He's alive for now, and I think he's going to stay that way. He's not going to get finished off, and wow. Arton goes down with what looked like a great great ES ulti. It wasn't enough. T took too much damage now. And a regen rune. Of all of all the things. And, well... This could be trouble for young Joven if he gets found here. A lot of potential damage in me. Is there Skyrath ultimate? I'll have to wait and see. No Skyrath ultimate. It doesn't look like it even matters. It just gets slaughtered. All you need is to set up stun and then Skyrath. He's got the nukes to deal with the rest. So while Drew Ranger not having the best time, it's something where they say, well, we're making up for it elsewhere. Drew Ranger can catch up. Just keep on farming Drew Ranger. We don't need you to come join our fights for us. You got the Dagon up on NA. That's a lot of burst damage. Skyrath with the Soul Booster. He's kept the Arcane boot, so he didn't do what a lot of people do, is disassemble them to sort of make have a little shortcut getting there. Earn up on Shadow Demon. Sentries, Wards, Arcane Boots. On the Rubik. Overall, it's it's very, very stable, very consistent. Not something they were hoping for there, though, as they do lose Drow Ranger at the top lane. This is what Aizu need to do, though. Find those pickoffs. Figure out which hero is actually alone on the map. It's not always going to be easy. Sometimes they'll have backup, sometimes it's bait. But right there, they read the, read the situation well, saw hero's bottom with their warding. Which is... Which is somewhat unavoidable, though. You gotta be, you gotta be as efficient with your time as possible when it comes to farming the lanes out. They want to also start pushing down some of these T1 towers rather than just keep losing T1 towers. Pacific, gonna TP. Oh, not gonna find a TP bottom. Trying to defend it. Yes, gonna try hiding some trees. He may actually, I believe he got. Yeah, he got there. Time to hide properly if he wants to. He may just choose against it. Oh, completely missing the action. This time it's a top lane. They find Nando. DK goes down. And bottom lane. ES drops a fissure. They're trying to find Rubik. He hasn't got any, he hasn't got any mobility. He's going to try to bring the ES down to the low ground. Not going to happen. Off to the side. Kel picks up EMZ. Great fissure coming down. Brings the Queen of Pain. Oh, ES ultimate. Artom. He's spot on with these, but it's not going to be enough. He's left on his own, and it's three more kills going the way of Pacific Palette.
and mid lane. Ancient Apparition with the life still. This is sort of the, the combo they're going for at bottom lane. You get the open wounds followed up by a cold feet, but it's not working out. And with, with the ganking and just burst damage of Pacific Palette, you can see why. Skyrath just destroying everyone. You've got the Dagon up on the Nerubian Assassin as well. The burst damage is insane. He, he's, I think he's just level up, levels up Dagon at this point. I don't think you need much else other than the burst damage. You're just going to be quite happy with that. And the Bloodstone coming on Skyrath, he's going to start racking up a ton of charges. Draft the play, the decision making so far has been pretty spot on from the Pacific Pallet Boys. And we'll see if it continues. It's really all they have to do at this point. They're, they're the ones controlling this game. And the problem is they're going to have a couple of them maybe caught out here by DK. He hasn't got his low thumbs yet. He can't sneak on in. Doesn't also have the bonus movement speed from it. Ruby and Assassin going scouting. He wants to fish. A couple sentries on the AA. Oh, he's found the opening apparently. Skyrath is there as well. Dagon, there's your first Bloodstone charge. Up to seven. He's just going to want to keep on getting more and more. The gifts that keep on giving. Track six may become one of them. Draw Ranger, TP. Yep. Just managed it. <laughs> I say, I say, oh. Get the TP, get the just managed to get out of there, and that was really just managed to get out of there. There's uh, rotation coming from mid to top. Pacific, uh, I mean, they saw the action there. They were, honestly, they just want to get aggressive here. They can, they can take whatever fights. They've got such big, a big of an item advance. They've got such great burst potential where the first year they see, they can just pop down. Unless there's someone out of position, out of formation, and oh, <sighs> thought that may have blocked in life still. So not going to be the case. Apparition Ultimate ES. Oh, they combo everything pretty well. AA Ultimate doesn't actually land though. Nerubian Assassin looks like his ultimate's on cooldown. He can't go invis and Shadow Demon. Caught in the fray things, trying to finish off the ES. Gonna need a disable. Nope. TP is does is isn't even gonna be casted in time. He gets taken out so fast, and once again, it's Eyes and they get one kill, but they have to trade so much for it. They give away two for one. A Queen of Pain included. Oh, and more happening. 420 KU. It's the Skyrath. He's up to 10 Bloodstone charges, and he's only had this a minute or two. Uh oh. Trouble's not over yet. Life Silla, silenced up. He wants it. He wants to cast that rage. He finally gets to. He infests into a creep. He's going to be left alone. They decide, well, enough's enough. We've tortured you for now. We'll be back later to finish you off. That's how we do see our first save. Bottom lane, Joe Ranger. Treads, couple reds, Helm of the Dominator. Has the life still mixed in there as well? Roshan back up already, wow. Surprisingly fast. And oh, running right into the Earthshaker. There's some meat for you. Nick's gonna help out. Vendetta, Dagon. Don't need Impale, don't need Mana Burn. Straight into the Dagon. Saves the AoE stun in case something does break out. Dagon short, bit of a long cooldown. 30 seconds, I mean. Not exactly, not short, but not too long, but one of those things where it's much more uh, much more effective to just use that and then save. You never know when that fight's going to break out. Keep the Impale, keep the Mana Burn. This is what you want to be Mana Burning. Queen of Pain, 300 Mana, goodbye. Even without Drew Ranger, they're still very confident in their ability to just push on through. Quite happy just to, to make a go at this, or at least linger around and try to find that opening. If not, maybe then they back off. They have shown an ability to make these decisions. Oh, Life Stealer! It's completely... That's just cruel and unusual. 
Tower. Oh, yo, yo! Dakin level 2 up. So much just burst damage. It's combine it with the silence. He can't cast the rage. Painful, painful stuff. It makes... It makes Pacific's ability to push so much easier when they can just pick off heroes like that. 12 Bloodstone charges there. The Ruby Assassin has the Dagon level 2. One person we haven't checked is this Drow Ranger, but we're still looking at two Wraiths, Treads, and the Helm of the Dominator. Unless we have something hidden on Courier. Lothars, is that your Drow? This is a very late and uh, indecisive Lothars to get one this late, but I can't really imagine whose else it would be. Just a very unusual choice to get now. Especially when there's been, I imagine, a gem or two floating around. A player's forces are under attack. Uh -oh. Pick off after pick off. That's the name of the game, really. Right now, for Pacific, it's, they're, they're in not a huge rush to end this. They don't want to go ultra late, but. Well, I mean, they, they're okay for doing that if they've got the advantage going in, which is going to come from pick off after pick off. Then they can. Then they'll have plenty more options. They can choose what they want to do, whether they want to look to go for an early, riskier option, like ending the game nice and early while they're ahead, or if they go for that safer option where it's just like, okay. Look to increase our farm lead, look to just take it tower by tower. And <laughs> oh, the Dagon. Oh, the Dagon. The Ruby Assassin looks like we'll pay for this with his life. Queen of Pain drops the ultimate just to make sure. Well, it's going to take something something very powerful and miraculous here. Something courageous from iZone if they want to hold this. They've got, they're known for their ability to be the Great Wall of iZone. And they, they can hold this for a while, but holding it is not breaking it. You've got to find a way through. You can't just you can't just be content sitting back and holding it. You have to find a way to break through and make something change. Make a difference. And, well, that's something which no one seems immediately... A player's force worried about for the iZone team. They're just happy to keep playing their game. Wait for the BKB on the Dragon Knight. And the Queen of Pain, where is it at? Ooh, BKB coming as well, but not really all that close. Unless we're looking at some pieces seeing around base. But yeah, this is a couple BKBs coming out. Something that they could have done maybe a bit sooner, but deciding now is right. Now is where we want to, where we want to strike. Fissure, Flame, just a constant harass. I mean, you've, you've, you've already got Dro Ranger below half HP without really sweating at all. They are going to find themselves sweating quite heavily, though, when they overextend like that. Yes, as well as Queen of Pain, and well... Here we go. Pacific, they're going for another. They, they're having another go at these outer towers, one by one. Skyrath is just out of control. Eleven and two. How many assists as well? Twelve assists. Twelve assists to the Ruby. Eleven, three and six to the Jakiro, and then Dro Ranger. Two, six and four. Dro Ranger had a bit of a miserable time, but that's kind of the role I feel she's been mean to play. Just distracting her. Well, really, it's the others going around ganking and just destroying faces. Nerubian as well as Skyrath. They've been the ones who are just controlling the pace of this. Draw Ranger, well, hey, you're under fun. You've got a couple deaths, which you really shouldn't have. And it's just like, well, what else? You'll carry when we need you to, as long as you're not a complete, completely new player, which obviously Pacific Palette, <laughs> far from it. The former Pacific Eichel player. Proven his worth here on the Draw Ranger with the Lothar's Edge up. May want to try sneak into Roshan at some point with the life seal. And oh, the pain is not over for Izone. They lose, lose SK at mid. They do find a couple of revenge kills here. Uh oh, Skyrath ultimate. Mana Burn finishes off the Queen of Pain. That's just absolutely brutal. Skyrath is on the run. 18 Bloodstone charges. Even if he dies, it's almost like an instant respawn. As a uh, Nerubian assassin just goes diving valiantly in. And uh, I believe that is the respawn. Nah, hello. Hello, Skyrath. How did you like your bloodstone? 
Triple kill though. <laughs> Something we should be watching. DK's manned up. Or cleaning up, I should say. He's gone Janda mode. He knows who, where, and how to avoid those big clashes, find the little little weak openings, put someone in there to help him if needed, and then afterwards it's like, well, look what we've achieved. Hmm. What next? Blink Ghost, 13 Bloodstone charges. They've taken, taken ages. Taken Roshan. And with that, oh sorry, taking. And with that, they'll have maybe the security they need to go for a, a more risky push. Probably give it to the Drill Ranger, I guess. He is copying a bit of focus fire. Maybe even they gave it to the Skyrath. But Drill Ranger, it looks like it will be. Oh, I'm, I'm impressed. Quality of games these guys bring all the time is is quite something. I zone so far have been outmaneuvered from start to finish. And here we go. They're going down the middle lane. They pretty content for this, even without the Dro. Dro's like, I've got ages, I'm just going to keep on farming Ancients. One set, next big item. Manta style. Maybe a butterfly. Pacific power, they've got a lot of farm here to work with. and Well, out of town, actually remaining at top. Forgot about that. So that, that's a target for them. That's saying they want to get down two two already at bottom, taken down just by the laning stage more or less, but... The player's forces are under hmm. attack. Where are the teams fighting? <laughs> well, at the moment, it's... Well, it's iZone, doing what they do best, and just put up a great big wall. Not let anyone in, not let anyone out when possible. And hope that hope for the best, really. Oh, Ruby and Assassin. This is gonna be. <gasps> oh, Paul, full HP gets KO'd. Absolutely brutal. The dag on five. Santino, he knows what's up. Sixteen and three. And that cooldown is just ridiculously short. Fifteen second cooldown. It's a split push. Joe Rangers at bottom lane. I want to say with an Aegis. Gyro <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying Gyrocopter just because he has some similarities. But no, Skyrath picks up another kill. Joe says, thank you very much. Bottom racks is a yoke for mine. And now I zone. This is really their last leg. This is where they've got to defend. BKB on uh, BKB on DK with an ES going flying in. This could be it. They will hold these top racks, I want to say. But problem is, bottom racks as well. Dagon 5 onto the ES. Impale, Mana Burn, trying to prevent DK from chasing. Problem is, Arcane Boots as always, or possibly even combined with some Magic Wand Charges. Bottom Raxes have gone down to the Drogue. But elsewhere, it's kills being given up. Draw Ranger, the only one still alive, up and fighting. Aid is still on. For how much longer, though? We haven't got the Roshan timer by the looks of things. A player's forces are under attack. Well, I've got to say, this, this Skyrath is proving the worthiness of this pick. Something which hasn't quite started properly trending yet, but when you see a Skyrath blade like this, you've got to feel that it's going to become more and more popular. Chinese need to start experimenting. Dro, what are you buying? What are you buying? 1k, hmm. Yep, 
Yeah, I can't wait till I can't wait wait till Skyrim hits Dota 2. That'll be that'll be something fun and sort of game changing. A lot of people don't actually know what he does because they switched to Dota 2 before he even came out. He'll be someone really interesting to see. And, I mean, even here in Dota 1, we're seeing a big impact on him here in the GST. The Gigabyte Esports Tournament, the IDC, International Dota Cup, all sponsored by Gigabyte, of course. They've made this possible for the last 12 months, and we're just nearing an end of Season 1 of the GESD IDC. It's been a fun 12 months. We started last February, and here we are one year later in February again, although this is your January edition. It's fake. Fake January. And uh, ending it. Ending things where we started in February. It's meant to be. And uh, we'll have, I don't know about we, but there will be, I believe, an announcement about Gigabyte. They've already announced they'll be partnering up with GMPGL, having some awesome GST and GST Dota 2 event stuff with them. Oh, he does manage to get the life still off. Immediately just burst and dag on down. The stun came in before he could even rage. That's just insane and the problem is these Dagon 5s have such a short cooldown these heroes are just melting one by one Dora Ranger says well forget heroes I'm gonna melt some Raxes he's got ages he's happy to die for this Fade Bolt just gonna chip away continually and it looks like well we're going inside the DK the stun is there and here comes well back up ES ultimate <laughs> kills kills him and more I gotta say that's a dead drow and and some Problem is, it's also a dead melee top racks. Now we're gonna wait for those respawns, but I zone. The wall it's showing signs of weaknesses. Water is leaking through the cracks. <laughs> oh the Dagons. The think of the humanity. Has he got one too? Let's say if you've got one too, Skyrath, I'll be disappointed. Well, I would be disappointed. I'm actually kind of half expecting it there. How well he's played and how much he can just keep on going at it. Not having to worry about other stuff. Skyrath looking for the opening. <laughs> it's not even about openings. It's just about the hero to get close enough for a Dagon 5 plus Mana Burn. That's all they're waiting for. It's all they really need. And here comes... Wait, no. Here comes the Breaker. Where is the Breaker? Dead for another five seconds. That's the hero they need to breach, really, through the wall. Can even go around through top, get some nice damage on from the Drow Ranger if they really want. But no BKB. Oh, BKB. What am I talking about? BKB now up. This really, I think, is over. Eyezone are going to find themselves unable to really defend against a BKB Drow. Even, a, even just a moderately farm one. I feel like this clip is just going to be a series of Dagon 5s and Skyrath just making people explode. That, that's the summary of this, this game. Dagon, people exploding to Dagon 5 and Skyrath Ultimates. That is this game in a nutshell. There's nothing really else to it. That I, I mean, that <laughs> makes sense. And here we go. Joe Ranger, there's your BKB. Finishes off the melee racks. Trying to work away on the range racks. Top is still there, actually. May look to just Lothar as a top and try to get the last Rax here, but five Rax is down. This is looking all but one for Pacific Power. Yet to win a title, and well, they're one game closer. The Wall of Eye Zone, well, it crumbles pretty damn fast to make it creeps. Anyways, guys, that was your grand finals. Game one between Pacific and iZone Pacific. Well, something they've never done before is win a GESC IDC, and they are looking like they could potentially do it, guys. We're going to have a quick short break and be back soon with more action of your GESC IDC Grand Finals, guys. Stay tuned. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit. You can find me on Facebook, uh, GGNet Gods there, and you can find me on Twitter, which is BTS Gods. It's confusing, I know. Um, but anyways guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back soon with more GSTIDC Dota action.